Hey everyone, so we're moving on to chapter three, and this chapter is all about calculating determinants. And so uh, there are a few methods that we can use to calculate determinants. I'm going to start this first one then here with, we're going to calculate the determinants using uh, row reduction. And so how do we do this? Well, let's take a look at a problem then from a midterm. Uh, it's from a midterm from 2015. And here's the following matrix, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 5, 0, 5, and amazing, uh, 7, 15, 8, 8. Okay. And we want to find the determinant of this matrix. And so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to row reduce this matrix until we get into an upper triangular form. Because once a matrix is in upper triangular form, we can just multiply the diagonal, which gives us our determinant. Okay. There are a few other things to keep in mind, though. The first thing is that when we uh, perform elementary row operations on this matrix, we change the determinant of the matrix itself. So what do I mean by that? So if we talk about elementary row operations, okay, uh, the first one then is if we permute rows, right? So if we switch any two rows, then the, the determinant of the new matrix that we switch uh, determinant of A, so let's let the original matrix be A, and then let the new matrix, so original matrix is A, and new is, let's say, B. Then if we switch two rows or permute rows, then determinant of A is going to be equal to the determinant or negative determinant of B. Okay, so the term of A is equal to negative B if we switch two rows. Okay, what else? Uh, what else can we do? Well, if we scale or multiply, so in this case, let B equal K times A, then the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of B divided by 1 over K, right? So B is equal to some scalar K. So k here is a scalar times a, right? And so then the determinant of a would then be equal to 1 over k times the determinant of b. So that's if we scale and multiply a row. The last thing we can do then is to add a multiple of run, add a multiple of a row to another row, right? And so that's the third elementary row operation. And this then, the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of B. So this doesn't actually affect the determinant of matrices. So that's good. So what do I want to do here? Well, let's take a look. Uh, I want to make this upper triangular. So the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually swap these two rows. So then this is equal to then the negative determinant, the negative determinant of 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 5, 0, 5, and 7, 15, 8, 8. All right, and it's equal to the negative determinant again because I swapped two rows. Okay, so now that I'm here with this new matrix, uh, what do I want to do? Well, I'll just keep on reducing. So I'm actually going to divide this row here by 2, and I'm going to divide this row by 5. Okay. And so now this is equal to, well, dividing by 2 and dividing by 5 is the same thing as if I multiplied by 1 half and multiplied by 1 fifth, right? So then this is actually equal to negative 10 times the determinant of 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 7, 15, 8, 8, right? Why is it negative 10? Well, it's because... I essentially multiply by one half, which means I need to multiply this by two, and then I d multiplied by one fifth, which means I need to multiply this one on the bottom by five, right? Because here, scalar multiplying a row, right? And yeah, I, I need to emphasize this is a row, right? So scalar multiplying a row, 
then if I multiply by scalar k, then the determinant of this new matrix is 1 over k times uh, the determinant, right? And so, again, I multiplied by 1 half, I divided by 2, so I multiply by 1 half. So k is 1 half, k is 1 half, which means that I need to divide by 1 half here, which then means multiply by 2. Okay, and the same thing with 5. I multiply by 1 fifth, and here I need to divide by 1 fifth, so I multiply by 5. And so that's how I get 10. Okay, so it's negative 10 times the determinant of this. Okay, well now, well now I just row reduce. So I'll do row 3 minus row 2. Right? I'll do this row minus that row. Uh, and then, so that's equal to negative 10 times the determinant of 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 7, 15, 8, 8. Okay, and now remember, so that was multiply, adding a multiple of one row to another. That doesn't change the determinant, so I don't have to change the scalar out front. It's still a negative 10. Okay, and then let's reduce then this bottom row. Uh, I want to get a zero here, and then so I get 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, uh, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. This becomes 0. This is still 15. So it becomes 8 minus 21, so this becomes negative 13, and then 8, okay? And this is still negative 10 times the determinant. And then that's equal to, well, now I want to zero out this guy here, okay? And so I'm subtract out the second row, 15 times the second row, uh, I get then negative 10 times the determinant of 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, uh, negative 13 minus 15 is negative 28, <sighs> negative 28, 8, okay, and then finally I need to zero out this negative 28 guy right here, so I need to subtract out 28 times a row above, and so this becomes the negative 10, whoops, negative 10 times the determinant of 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and this becomes negative 20. And so then my determinant finally then is negative 10 times 1 times 1 times negative 1 times negative 20, which gets me negative 200 is the determinant of this guy up here originally. Okay? And so. The thing to keep in mind then are these elementary row operations. This handwriting is really bad, I apologize. But if you permute a row, then your determinant flips signs. And if you scale and multiply a row, not the entire matrix, okay, just one row. If you multiply one row by scalar k, then uh, the determinant changes. And so then you need to, uh, the determinant of your original matrix then, A, is equal to 1 over k times the determinant of your new matrix, which has the scalar multipled row. And then if you add a multiple of a row to another and you replace it, uh, then the, scale, uh, the, the determinant stays the same. And so this determinant is negative 200, which is the determinant of this matrix. Plug into any matrix calculator, that should, that's what you should get. And so this is one way to find the determinant of matrices. It's OK. Well, we, we really use matrices or determinants when we get to chapter 7. We have to find this thing called a characteristic polynomial. At that point, row reduction isn't really the best way to go. So we'll cover other methods in these next few videos.